Hi, Mr. Ron. Hey, Teresa. Yeah, so we have some questions to ask you about you. So first, let's start with why did you come to teach at TCIS? Why did I come to TCIS? Well, I have been teaching in Chicago and uh, I've been doing a lot of traveling. I was in my early 20s and I would travel for one week or one month and it never just seemed like enough time. So I said, maybe I should try to live abroad somewhere. So my goal was to go work and teach abroad in South America. So I started learning Spanish and uh, reading about South American cultures and countries. And then I went to a job fair in Iowa and uh, I saw that there was a position available uh, at Thai Chinese International School. Didn't know anything about the school. Uh, and so I was able to receive an interview and I thought, oh, I'll just do this interview for practice. Uh, because at that time I had no interest in coming to Asia. Well, after interviewing with other schools and looking at the options and the salary, I, I decided, well, maybe I should check into this Thai Chinese International School. And, uh, and to make a long story short, I accepted the position and I uh, pursued the, the job at Thai Chinese International School. Okay, so now you teach um, media production, right? right? And you taught like marketing and accounting in the past? I've taught uh, introduction to computers. I've taught marketing one. Marketing to entrepreneurship, accounting. I've taught robotics uh, and media productions one, media productions two. Uh, so I've, I've, I've even, before I came here, I was even a middle school language arts teacher. I've taught in the lower school. Uh, so I, I've got a lot of different experiences under my belt. So. What subject do you see yourself teaching if not the ones you've taught before? Oh, that's, that's a great question. I think if I had to do it over again, uh, I think I would maybe pursue teaching history, or maybe world history. I mean, I'm just interested in cultures and, and things that have happened in the past that have shaped our future. And that's always just been a personal interest for me. Um, uh, I, took, I was an economics major and undergraduate and I didn't like all the numbers and graphs, but the socioeconomics courses I really enjoyed, just how the government and, uh, and how business uh, affected economies and so forth. So uh, history classes, some type of uh, cultural classes, those things would interest me and I'd pursue those. Okay, so when we say about like teaching, we always, we always thought about grades, right? So when your students fail your class, who is to fault? Like, is it, is it students' fault or is it your fault? I think we all have to accept a certain amount of responsibility when, there's, when a student struggles in a class. Uh, oftentimes, if a student's just not doing the work or not coming to class, uh, they make it a lot easier. But uh, when students struggle, I think any teacher, all teachers, uh, do take it personal and want to figure out, okay, what is the problem? How can I help improve this situation? So maybe the student doesn't understand the content. How can I help the student understand better? Maybe the student isn't coming to class. What can the teacher do to help that student come to class? So you have to look at all those factors and as a teacher, how can I do more to help those students. So we, it's a shared responsibility. Uh, even though the percentages might not be the same, maybe it's 95% on the student and 5% on the teacher, or there could be other factors. But I think it's a, it's a collective responsibility. So, so enough about the school and what you're teaching. So what sports do you play? Well, right now, um, I play less sports than I did when I was your age. Okay. Uh, when I was growing up, I played baseball, I played basketball, I played American football, and I ran track. Uh, I was always involved in some sport. Um, in American culture, uh, sports is a huge part of, uh, of, of, of our lives growing up. I mean, sometimes I think my mom 
uh, enjoyed the, the, the games more than I did. I mean, she was dedicated Friday nights, basketball games, Friday nights, football games. But growing up, like that's, I, I always like to tell people I've only missed two practices in my entire life. Uh, once was because I had strep throat and my coach sent me home because he said he didn't want me infecting uh, other people. And I missed a baseball practice when I was 10 when my grandmother passed away. So uh, again, that was year round sports. Never missed a game, never missed a practice other than those two instances. Now that I'm older, I play basketball once a week. I ride my bicycle, I run, and uh, I'm in the gym lifting weights probably four or five times per week. So which sport listed this now is the most important to you? I mean, basketball has had the biggest influence in my life just because I've played it the most. I've coached it for the past 12 years. Uh, so I would say basketball would be uh, most important, but I will have to say that uh, American football games are just fun to play. Just fun to play. Just the emotion and, and excitement out there. And it's unfortunate a, a lot of people in Asia don't get that experience. But just being on the field and able to let loose and work with your teammates and just, it's, it, it's just so much emotion going on during, during, it, during the game. But you have to think as well. So it's, I, I love playing, playing American football games. Okay. okay. Thank you for answering all questions, Mr. Ron. Okay, no okay. problem. All right, take care. Thank you. Okay.